wake up, no sunlight, so cold, sleep is nice, so tired, my eyes fight, they just want to close back up tight, get up. Hey guys, Andy Elliott, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today I'm here with my awesome wife, Jacqueline, and we got Carrie Lake with us, which I know everybody in this world knows who Carrie Lake, and if you don't know, you'll know who she is in a minute. Um, the reason why we asked Carrie to come out here, we live in Scottsdale, live in Arizona, she lives in Arizona, we, uh, she tells it direct, she tells it like it is. Um, she's awesome. You know, my wife, I've always looked up to my wife. She's taught me a lot in life and she's always been really strong and she has such a good intuition of like where, where things are going. Right. So I always listen. And then, you know, my, I have a good friend named Brad Lee and he's like, Hey, you got to check out Carrie Lake, which I've heard of her before, but I watched, uh, the podcast and I'm like, dude, this, this is incredible. <laughs> this is a really strong leader. And I, and I wanted to start and I know Thank that you. you got a lot on your heart and you know, you're traveling the world, you're sharing this great message, there's big things that are coming, and your goal is to change the world. You said dying for your country is something that, you know, is super important to you. We don't have many people like that anymore, so it's an honor to be here with you, and I mean that. Um, but, like, we're in an era right now, we're really in a shortage of leadership all around the world. Especially I mean, women. Yeah, truthfully, but even men. I mean, men, you know, women, uh, families, and businesses, and, you know, yeah. uh, and politics and just ever just the whole world there's this massive shortage of leadership and you're a really good leader yeah. right so um i Thank thought you. maybe we would start by introducing carrie lake and Hello. to make sure that if they don't know who you are right um tell them a little bit about who you are and where they can find you and wow well i agree with a lot of that when it comes to leadership because um we're in some perilous times right now i think it's pretty obvious if you wake up and you see where the world's going every day there's another catastrophe hitting and striking and you're like is somebody going to help lead us out of this and i think we do have some good leaders actually and more who are emerging because they're realizing the weight of this moment and they're realizing that this great country that we are just blessed i mean we won the powerball yeah. just being born here mm -hmm. and there's nowhere else like america and if we lose america uh, the whole world goes dark, in my opinion. And so I think there's a lot of people who are stepping up, realizing kind of we're at the precipice of either taking this country and bringing it back in, and having our best days ahead of us, or as Ronald Reagan said, plunging into a thousand years of darkness. You know, when those are your two choices, a lot of people want to stand up and start to lead. Mm -hmm. They want to stand up and become better people. They want to stand up and become better fathers and mothers and business owners and just uh, members and of the community and citizens so i think we're seeing things change and we're mm -hmm. more leaders are being built around us i'm even seeing it with young people right now we're looking at what's happening on our college campuses all of these protests flags being taken down and thrown on the ground and burned and uh palestinian flag is being um you know shot up the the flagpole and we're seeing these young men say wait a minute mm. Uh, that's where I draw the line. This is our country. We're not going to let our flag be disrespected like that. I, I was, that. Ooh, I was really encouraged to see that because my kids are right around that age, 19. I have a son, 19, a daughter who's 21. I agree with, uh, with you, Andy, that we need more, more men, leaders. young men leaders mm -hmm. right. and men, because, um, I grew up in a family of eight women, <laughs> uh, eight, wow. eight girls and one boy in my family. We had a big family and I, I kind of think our girls are doing pretty good compared to what our, what's going on with our young men and our boys. And I say this at raising a boy and a girl, you know, society has been pushing our men down, mm. uh, telling them, you know, if you're masculine, you're toxic, mm. telling them, you know, that they have to always, uh, you, you can't compete with women, but you got to compete with women. And, and the only way to get ahead is not to do something where you're showing your merit and your value, like being the best athlete or being the best student or learning you know, how to do something, a skill. Mm -hmm. That's not how you're getting ahead right now with things like CRT and DEI. You're getting ahead based on just your skin color or some other arbitrary mm -hmm. uh, characteristic rather than excellence. Mm -hmm. And when we were growing up, you got ahead and you got a pat on the back mm -hmm. when you did something excellent. Right. And now our kids are like, how do we get that affirmation? Not, it's not by being good at something, it's by being something that we can't control, our skin color, mm -hmm or some of this crazy yeah, stuff like that victims now. Yeah. yeah, meritocracy yeah. is dead, but I think it's coming back. So I really want to see our young men be lifted up. Our country needs strong men. Right. And we're starting to see it happening, and I'm really happy to see that. You know, I, I got, um, the media attacked me when I did a speech once saying that men and women aren't equal. We aren't equal. If we were equal, God would have made just either men or women. Right. We're <laughs> complementary. Women have skills that they do better men have skills they do better 
and we're, we're meant to be complementary. So totally I think right. about just speaking the truth when it comes to that. But yeah. for those of you who don't know me, I'm running for United States Senate uh, out of the great state of Arizona. I'm the Trump endorsed candidate. I am a mom. I'm a fed up mom. I'm really worried about the direction our country's going. I ran for governor. We ran an incredible 525 day campaign where the entire state came around and we had a movement. It was never about me. I just happened to be the mouth kind of behind the movement. And it was so beautiful to see all the people coming together. We had some issues with our election, unfortunately. We're still trying to work through those. But those issues actually help wake people up mm -hmm. and make them realize that, you know, we have to have elections where every legal vote counts, where election day is run smoothly. Because if we lose um, the ability to have honest elections, we will eventually watch our country collapse. Yeah. So I'm running for um, U.S. Senate, and we've got some really big issues ahead of us. We've got a wide open border, an economy that's uh, collapsing under some really bad leadership that I believe we're getting out of Joe Biden and his administration. But I also feel that we can quickly turn the corner. Once we vote and get the right people in office, we can quickly turn this nightmare around. Well, people love you. I mean, everybody that I talk to, they all love you. Thank you. Well, the media doesn't. <laughs> well, that's the media not doesn't like anybody. That's right. That's not everybody. The media is just a voice. The yeah. people, though, they, they love you. I think they love what you stand for. Yeah. Everybody that I've Thank talked you. to, they say, man, I love that woman. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. We, I get such great response. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's overwhelming sometimes. We're walking through an airport and people stop. Oh my gosh, can I have a picture? Thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for what you're doing. We were in Chicago not too long ago and we had taken a red eye there. We were waiting for our ride and so we had a ton of bags. And we were just kind of sitting there having a cup of coffee and about five or six people came up separately. And all walks of life, an elderly woman who'd flown in for her great grandbaby's christening, and she said, I used to be a Democrat. I follow you. I am now a Republican mm -hmm. she goes, because I'm worried about America. And thank you for what you're doing. You got my vote. She happened to be from Arizona. Mm, Two um, young black men from Chicago who were getting a cup of coffee. They found out I was running for Senate. And they said, please help bring our community back. Please mm -hmm. help bring our community back. That's awesome. uh, we met two guys who are from Rhode Island, but they study in Canada. They came over and talked to us. I mean, these were people who were totally different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize, and, and I've been realizing this for some time, America is actually very much together. We're not divided like the media the tells media. us we are. Yeah. They say it's 50-50 or 51-49. Mm -hmm. I believe 70% or more of Americans are together, mm -hmm. want to work together, want to solve these problems. And then there's, there's some who are, in my opinion, so far left and almost on the verge of Marxist, but we need to peel them over and, and wake them up as well. Yeah. yeah, something will happen one day. It'll shake them and they'll realize. Everyone has something that wakes them up, right? Mm -hmm. We're yeah. seeing it right now with the young people on college campus. We're seeing them wake up. Yeah. We're seeing um, young athletes, young female athletes who maybe didn't care about politics at all. Why should they? They're young. They're having the time of their life. They're uh, focusing on being the best athlete they can and then all of a sudden what they got to compete against men yeah that was a wake-up call mm -hmm. you're seeing moms who didn't have time to be political they're raising little ones they get their kids off into school and they find out the books that are in the library are not books about history about mm -hmm. heroes but books about um confused, confused <laughs> people and some very frankly pornographic messaging to yeah. our young people that wakes a mom up yeah. Various different things are waking people up. Start Triggers, people yeah. Off. That's a good way to say it. pissing people off. I was mm -hmm. choosing waking them up, but yeah. that yeah, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, and now they're they're looking for that good voice, and I think you're that voice. And by the way, the media or people with agendas. I mean, everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even believe that those people that are saying what they're saying believe that. I mean, yeah. you, you probably know better than I do. I think they're just getting paid. That's their agenda, and that's how they're running their mouth. Now, the world, we live in a social media world, right? Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people are ready for things to change. Yeah, and really you see it more because you have a following of millions of people. So your sample group is so much bigger than somebody who has, you know, 200 followers. Well, yeah, and they love self-development. Listen, right. like what you're doing, you're preaching the stuff that literally 
you think about the self-development space right now it's a trillion dollar industry mm -hmm. right it's going crazy it's going through the roof it's going cycle there's more coaches teachers mentors and everything right. am i right because people want to be brought up and they're like how can i change. work on myself Dude, they're sick of yeah. it you know be the change yeah. you want is that I, there's a right. the, i forget the exact quote something like that when you you want to see the world changing it starts with you right hustle summit two it's right around the corner y'all what i want to do is get you in the room last time hustle summit the very first one it was standing room only we packed the house in less than 30 days what i want you to do is don't take my word for it don't take my advice listen to what the people that actually showed up information has been on point that you can go home and actually start doing right now we're part of eric's coaching program but his specific form of sales he speaks well in teaching us what to do on these calls the energy is super vibrant obviously eric's bringing up all the heat here to get my frequency up man this has been the perfect place high energy levels man so it's it's going great so far the energy is infectious the people know everybody's here is ready to get after it Everybody here is wanting to make a change in their life or their business. You're walking into a different reality. I know that he has a track record of doing this business at a high level. So salespeople respect high level salespeople. Hustle Summit Live. Make sure you're at the next one. And for those of you that are wondering, is this for me? Yes, this is for you. Whether you're just thinking about getting started in the wholesale industry, you're working that nine to five, you're in the rat race wondering, how do I get out of this? You may be a wholesaler that just can't get consistent results or you're thinking about building a team and you don't know where to go from here. Or all you realtors out there wondering, can I get out of the traditional real estate and go into the wholesaling where I hear about these big, fat, juicy spreads that my commissions possibly couldn't equate to? If that is for you, you're qualified to put your ass in the room. And for everybody that's wondering, where is Hustle Summit 2 gonna be? It's in Scottsdale, Arizona, y'all, at the Lion's Den, Andy Elliott's office. I'm telling you, this is the place that you want to be. I'm gonna show you how to consistently make between 20 to $100,000 a year, like clockwork, so you can finally get paid what you're worth. Scottsdale, Arizona. The Lion's Den. And you guys are there to help people, right? Yeah, and that's why I say I think since you're going out and you're literally standing up for what you believe in and you're not being a coward mm -hmm. and you're not selling out, I think that that right there is inspiring to a lot of people to say, hey, you know what, I think I'm going to do this too. Yeah, it's refreshing. It's yeah. giving them hope to do the same. You know, courage is contagious. And when I first kind of... I guess became a national figure. Um, I mean, I worked for 27 years covering Arizona as mm -hmm. the main news face, mm -hmm. and people know me here. And I, during COVID, as a mom, as a citizen, I, as a journalist, on all three of those levels, I, I had a huge wake up call. One, when they started masking our kids. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, you know, sending them home from school, trying to force my husband to get a vaccine that he was just uncertain about. Mm -hmm. um, and then working in the news, realizing that journalism wasn't even uh, asking the questions that needed to be asked. It was just, what does the government tell us? Okay, we had to put that out. Journalism had died. And so mm -hmm. during all of that, I just had a huge wake up call and epiphany. And I said, I gotta walk away from this. I did not become a journalist to tell half truths. A half right. truth is a lie. And so I prayed a lot. I, I got much closer to God. My relationship with God improved greatly. And I just said, I can't do this, God. I know I'm making a ton of money and I hate to walk away from it. A seven figure contract is a hard thing to walk away from. Mm -hmm. But I was feeling physically ill putting out that information that was just kind of half truths. And so I walked away, I put a video out to the so people of Arizona. It's out there somewhere on my Rumble page or you can find it. And I just said, I'm, I'm leaving, I can't do this anymore. Thank you for inviting me into your homes. I, I got into journalist, journalism to be truthful, and I'm not interested in telling half-truths, and I know God will have my back, and thank you very much. I put that, uploaded that onto the internet, which by the way, at the time I was 52, that took me about an hour to figure out how to do that. <laughs> but you can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, we've learned that for sure. It was a little bit after midnight, my husband and I uploaded that video. I mean, here I'd been in people's homes for 27 years. I upload that video. I didn't think it would be a big deal. I just wanted to let the people know why I was leaving. Yeah. I woke up the next day and my phone was almost hot to the touch. I had so many text messages. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're leaving. This is 
Thank you. Thank you for being honest. We knew something was going on with the news and you just verified it. Mm. Tens of thousands of emails came in over the course of the next couple of months. Mm. You know, thank you. You showed courage and you're giving me the, the ability to show that same kind of courage. I'm mm -hmm. going to leave my job or I'm going to um, I start speaking out. Yeah, you know, doing in. doing more to be truthful uh, mm -hmm. in that time. What year was that? That was just a couple years ago, 21. Oh, 21. March of 21. Wow. So cool. I think it was March 1st or March 2nd. Just like the other day. And a lot has happened since then. With oh, my gosh. And then, but immediately after that, I started getting people. We couldn't go anywhere. We'd be for a walk in our neighborhood. A car would pull over and go, would you please run for office? Please consider running for office. Hundreds of people. We need people like you to run for office and represent us because you know us, you know the issues that we're facing, That's right. and we trust you. We know that you'll do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And we need to start sending people to Washington, D.C. and into political office who have been willing to make a sacrifice. You know, I, my friend Eli Crane said, I love Carrie because she's courageous. We need more courageous people. People who aren't, you know, I, when you're willing to walk away from a seven-figure contract, yeah. when mm -hmm. someone comes to yeah. you, which happened, uh, about a year ago and tried to bribe me so that I wouldn't run for office. They, didn't, they wanted somebody else to run for the Senate seat, somebody who they could control. And they came to me and said, uh, some very powerful people back east want to offer you, uh, you know, a big job, a big paycheck just to not run. Wow. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let some powerful people back east control. control who the people elect for this office in Arizona. And so, you know, a lot of a lot of crazy things happen in the world of politics. Mm -hmm. And we need to get some people in Washington, D.C. are going to push back against that and stand right. up and do the right thing. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's why when I was talking about leadership, you know, just self-leadership, you lead yourself well, you're here with your husband. He's awesome. Right. He is awesome. You know, the family mm -hmm. is everything. Right. Right. And as a lot of people hear you talk and maybe they forget that you got a family. Maybe they I do. How much I have, your family means to you. Means so right? much, yeah. And that's and you know, and a lot of people they could easily just go back and sit in their family and not open their mouth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why things got so bad. Well, they want to protect what they have, you know. And I don't blame people. It's like we got to put food on the table. Maybe Dad was being forced to get um, a shot or not work, and you have to make decisions. These were difficult times, and mm -hmm. some people said I won't do it. Some said I've got to do it because I got to feed my family. We were all put through so much during that time. And I understand when people have to make decisions that are uncomfortable for them. You know, a lot of people got a shot they didn't want to get because they needed to put food on the table. Sure. A lot of people walked away and made sacrifices. Yeah. We're all being put through the grind, grinder right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we're finding out what we're made of. And we're finding out that sitting on the sideline, being quiet because we think we're trying to protect our family may actually be hurting our family because if we don't stand up, speak out right now about what we're on the verge of losing, which is our country, our constitution, our God-given inalienable rights. Mm -hmm. If we don't speak out about it now, um, our kids are going to have a very dark future. And so now is the time. We've all been through hell and back the last few years with everything they've pushed on us. Now is the time to step forward and say, now I'm going to start speaking out. I'm not going to be quiet anymore. We're going to speak out and talk about what we need to do in this country to turn it around. What, what are some things that people could do, uh, f like, to, to back you, to help you? What, what can they do? They can vote when it's time to vote. Right. Right? What, what else are some things that people can do? I mean, well, to get behind for, your, first of your all, movement. a lot of people uh, haven't been involved politically. They, they, you know, they have an opinion. We talk mm -hmm. about it. We might complain about what's happening, and that's our right, First Amendment right. Yeah. But they don't vote. Like, I met, guide, like guide us. Like, let's okay. Have so what I would say to people, and you're talking to them, they're like, dude, I agree with everything she's saying. What do like, I? Okay. First thing you want to do mm -hmm. is make sure that you are registered to vote. Not everyone's registered to vote, so we all have to get out. This sounds really basic. Get out, talk to friends and neighbors, and when you have those conversations, you know, you're talking about how things aren't going in the right direction. Hey, by the way, are you registered to vote? Have you checked to make sure you're registered at your current address? That sounds like a minor thing. It's very important. Yeah. Okay. And then we need to start talking to our neighbors and our friends again about politics. Mm -hmm. We have to start doing that. There's so much going on. Um, if you want to get involved in a campaign or somebody you believe in, Contact that campaign, go to their website, sign up to volunteer, become part of it. You know, it, my campaign is not, it's not about 
me wanting to be a senator and I want the clout and the fame and fortune. I've I had fame and fortune for 30 years in my career. Yeah, with no problem. It's totally <laughs> overrated. Nobody was messing with you then. Yeah, nobody. I wasn't going against the deep state then. Yeah. Now it's a little bit different. You know, we had a, a roof leak um, a couple months ago. We were traveling and we came home and had tons of rain and I, it really destroyed an office. And I called my friend who's a roofer. And it's like literally water pouring into our house. And he goes, you don't even seem stressed right now. It was like one in the morning. And I said, Jason, I got the deep state after me. I've got, I'm being sued by election officials because I had the courage to speak out about our, you know, botched elections. I, you know, I just started naming all of the crazy stuff yeah. happening in my life. This is nothing. I'm like, this is water. Yeah. <laughs> this is a roof that can be repaired. We can pull out the carpeting. This we will get through. There's a much bigger fight. So people can get involved. I mean, if you are a mom and a dad, get involved. Go, go to the school board meetings. If your kids are in a school, if you're not homeschooling, mm -hmm. go to the school board meetings. Just step up and get involved in something you believe in. It just takes that one step forward to say, hey, email a campaign. How can I get involved? Make sure you're talking to your neighbors about the issues. We got to start talking as Democrats and Republicans again. Mm -hmm. It's really not Democrats versus Republican. It's it's yeah. a very corrupt government system versus we the people. Mm -hmm. And the media wants us to think it's Democrats versus Republicans. Mm -hmm. It's really a Washington D.C. uniparty versus us. And so we need to start coming together as okay. Americans. We can solve these problems quickly. What I've learned in the past few years, which I didn't know before, is that. Politicians don't want to solve problems. That's why they hated Donald Trump. Mm. Donald Trump came into D.C. He's a businessman. If you've got a problem in your business, yeah, you, fix solve it. It. you solve it. You don't let it fester and then say, well, we'll just keep pouring money into the symptoms and the secondary problems it's causing. Mm -hmm. You solve the problem. But the reason they want the problems to persist mm -hmm. is because, first of all, they create the problems. So they create the problem and then all of the symptoms of that problem, let's say the open border. Yeah. Biden came in and opened that border up on day one, and that created a snowball effect of all these other problems, the problems of people invading our border, pouring into our country, the problem of housing, where do we put them, the problem of transporting them, how do we move them around, the problem of crime that is, you know, all of these mm -hmm. different, our services that are being um, just depleted. And, and on and on, fentanyl pouring in, deaths from fentanyl, so you have mm -hmm. all of these symptoms the way to solve all that is to fix the problem, seal the border and don't let this invasion happen. But the politicians so, so. won't do that because they want to pour $100 million into this problem, $200 million into transporting people, uh, you know, $60 million into the homeless uh, drug addiction problem. They, w they see it all as dollar signs, yeah. all those symptoms. Mm. Just rip the Band-Aid off. And they don't want to ever fix the problem because they so want to keep funneling money into it. So we're going to get to D.C. and change that. We're going to be problem solvers, common sense solutions. That's why I love President Trump. You know, when I was running for governor, President Trump would always say, you sure you don't want to be a senator? You'd be really great, you know, as a senator. It'd be great yeah. to have. I said, no, I want to be the governor. I want to, I want to help my state. I love Arizona so much. The state's been so good to me. I met yeah, I my. I can't believe you didn't win. That doesn't even make sense. Well, yeah, I mean, we were it, no, it's no, terrible like, I, when I, they. I know you should have won. Yeah. And I think you did win, but mm -hmm. I just, obviously, I don't understand it, but I, I can't even understand well, it. Well, when election day, when 60% of the polling locations have equipment that doesn't work and they print the wrong ballots and four and six hour lines, you know, that's a problem. Um, but, you know, I, I think that it woke more people up that we have never solved all of the serious issues in our election systems and yeah. we have to do that. And now I'm running for U.S. Senate. If the people who did that to our elections, mm -hmm. in my opinion, stole the government from we the people, if they think they're going to get away with that and take a, a beautiful movement that we have and make me go away, they really messed with the wrong woman because oh, I'm not going away. And now I realize that I have to stay in this political arena. Back stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I like we, how wiry you are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because you stand firm in what you believe in. Yeah, yeah there's no sway. Yeah, in I love. Way. We were talking about not selling out. Like, you know, you can tell you got this fire inside of you. Well, we've watched for so long as we elect people, we send them into office, whether it be state, local, up in the government, in the in D.C., and then they vote opposite of what they said they were going to do. They get compromised there, and they don't do what they say they were going to do for us, mm -hmm. and and they work for us. They, they forget often that they work for we the people. 
and so it's really frustrating to see that. And we watch as they surrender every hill. They get on top of a hill, they surrender. We're, we're, at the, we're on the final hill, mm -hmm. and we cannot surrender this hill. Surrendering this hill means saying goodbye to America. And so I'm going to stand on top of that hill so crazy. with my high heels on. I love it. Jackie's going to join me. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to join me, everybody out there. And I do believe the people are with us. I, I see it every day. We just have to turn the media off. It's, it's just about pushing lies, division, anger, and keeping us at each other's throats. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Well, I, I definitely think 100% you're going to make a giant impact. I think you're going to you. win, mm -hmm. without a doubt. And the reason why is because people are looking for real right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're looking for real, like just a fact. Like, I think it's just so many people are just sick of frauds. Yeah. yeah. They're sick of fake Authenticity. Shit. I think, yeah, I think people well, are. Well, and especially our young generation. I know you have, you've got people of all ages who watch right. you. And, you know, why aren't they watching a, you know, a reality show on cable where they've got actors or whatever do you're because you're a real person yeah. and you know and I'm sure you do videos and you might not get everything you know you sometimes when we're doing a video live it might something flubs up and you just keep moving along and that's what I think they like President Trump he speaks from the heart yeah he's not somebody who not a consultant a wrote a speech and he memorized it young people can see right through all that funny right. stuff people right. love the raw business person People yeah. love to see people work with, you know, real intuition, real heart, yeah. have a real smart mind, mm -hmm. not a puppet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People like to see people make decisions for themselves. People like to see decisive people. Right. How about just make a damn decision? And, and sometimes you'll, you'll make a decision that didn't work out. Yeah. But that's how we learn and that's how we grow. And, yeah. and that's one of the things I, I fear with, you know, some of the young generation. Because there's so many kind of helicopter moms out there, I've seen them in my life. Um, we don't let our kids make those mistakes when they're younger. Yeah. It's important to let our kids make some mistakes when they're younger so that when they're, that oh, when they're 30 or 25 and they finally have kind of escaped mom and dad, that's not when they're first learning how to deal with mistakes. Mm -hmm. They've made smaller mistakes when they're younger, so when they get older they know how to deal with decision making and consequences and things like that. Yeah, and also you talked about people like real life stuff. They like failure. Yep. Too. I think it's good for people to see. We show our wins. We show our losses. We show everyday life. Yeah. Like we show people how we live, yeah. right? And people mm -hmm. have gotten the opportunity to see you fail, which a lot of people have put you together, right? They've put yep. shit together that's allowed you to, you know, like this voting deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it had to have been rigged. But my point is, it's whatever it is, you're, you don't stop. Yeah. Right? People need to see people not quit. People need to see. And, see and that's people. a tough. That's a tough place to be. You know, we work so hard, and we had the people with us and it was when that happened at the election someone said how did you handle that I said it was horrible <laughs> I mean it was a really dark place but I felt almost even more bad for the people of Arizona who mm -hmm. went out and vote who got involved in the movement went out and vote did everything right and care. people were telling me don't fight this and I said are you kidding me if I don't fight for the people of Arizona right now then what kind of a person am I they can't file a lawsuit. A, a single voter couldn't file a lawsuit. It had to be me. And so I stood up and, and we've been fighting and we still continue to fight. My dad was a football coach and he taught me that the only for, way that you will for certain fail is when you quit. Yeah, giving it. And so no quitting. No that's quitting. Great. I love yeah, that. Yeah, and that's, that's why I was going to say, I think, I think uh, raw language, I think you're going to beat everybody's ass. Mm -hmm. um, and I really think that uh, a lot of people, they, they do lay down when things get hard. When people fail, they yeah. back off. But it seems like you're rested. I'm looking at you. I mean, you're a beautiful woman. You're you're rested. Thank you. You, <laughs> seem, you seem sharp. Your eyes are super focused. You know you know what you're doing. You spoke on TV, but you seem hungry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I think that's what people need to see is the heart. My wife always talks about, like, people wearing their heart on their sleeve. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you can tell when people really care. Right. And yeah. uh, and I think out of all the footage, we would, we would watch you speak. Like you can always tell that your heart is right there on your sleeve. You can always tell that your intentions are really, really good. Well, I care and about people. people. I, you know, the state was so good to me. I come from a big family, so I also, you know, in a big family, you don't have a lot. You have each other, which is a lot, but you don't have a lot of material things. Right. And you also learn, you know, f you learn how to argue. You learn how to fight. You learn how to make up. You learn how to compromise. Occasionally you have to compromise when you have nine kids mm -hmm. in the family. You don't, right. I always joked, I don't think I ever got my way, although my siblings would probably disagree. <laughs> you always kind of got, if whatever you wanted, you got maybe a little bit toward it, but you never got the full thing that you wanted because mm -hmm. there are so many other people. 
and you had to just kind of deal with that many people. Um, but the people of this state have been so incredibly good to me, and, you know, inviting me into their homes. And there's a real friendship there. Mm -hmm. I, I joke that I have an intimate relationship with the people of Arizona because people used to say, my husband and I were in bed watching you on the news last night. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's an intimate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the beauty of having that relationship is that they never believed all the attack ads. You know, here I'm running against people who are highly funded. We were a startup. I didn't even know how to run a campaign. I just, I decided I was gonna run for office and I didn't even know how to do that and I had to figure it all out. But we were running against people who had very deep history in, in politics and a ton of money, running attack ads nonstop, saying the most horrible things about me, M tens of millions of dollars in attack ads. Mm -hmm. And none of it stuck because I had that relationship mm -hmm. with the people. Mm -hmm. The people of Arizona were watching these attack ads going, wait a minute, we've known her for 30 years. Yeah. That's not who she is. We know who she is. She's that authentic friend who gave us uh, the news every day and told us what was going on That's right. and actually walked away from a lot of money when that news failed to be news anymore. Yeah. And so I think I, that is such an appreciated um, friendship and I'll never, never, never betray the people of this state. Those are true fans right there. Yeah. I believe in them. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think strong women you set a really good example for strong that's women. And I think that that's going to be a big secret, I think, to, to you winning. I think a lot of men, because you speak very mm -hmm. stern, right? Yeah. I, the men come like up to me. Your dad's a coach, right? Yeah, he yeah, was a so, coach. So, but you speak stern. So, like, a lot of men will speak stern, but uh, some women don't. But you speak very stern. So, I think you have a good voice for women to stand up. I have strong. a lot of men who say, I'm with you. I love, I love the fight. You have all that. But the thing that makes me the most proud is when either dad brings his daughter up and says, my daughter really loves you. Yeah, Thanks for being that. a good role model. Yes. Or a young, you know, 20 or 25 year old woman says, I love you. Thank you for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I look up to you. I'm like, wow. I mean, that, that I take seriously. Jeez. We yeah. need to be as adults. Talk about being a leader. It starts with being a role model yeah. to people who are younger. They're mm -hmm. looking for they're looking for someone to look up to. Exactly. You know, looking and we, the there's, there's not that many in Hollywood. They're looking at sports figures. We're, uh, they're looking to, you know, a lot of people who are letting them down. And right. it's nice when there's somebody you can say, I actually look up to that person. That's great. Yeah. So I feel good about that. Yeah, I love it. Well, just a little so, bit of time, just um, th that we've been together. Um, we'll, we'll call your shot. Number one, you're going to win it, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> We know Love you're going to win it, and your husband's going to watch that happen, and That's you guys great. are going to celebrate, and it's going to be super cool. Um, but you guys are going to change a lot of people's lives. Right, Obviously, the people in Arizona are rooting yes. for you, so you got a lot of people here. But then all around the world, you got all these people that need a good mentor, mm -hmm. right? They need someone to look up to. They need, I believe, family people, you know, and people mm -hmm. that have kids, that they're married, mm -hmm. and that still go give all they got to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, support in this country. Yeah. Well, you when know. you're a parent, you really... It, it changes your perspective on everything. Yes, of course. It's less about what do I need and how do I protect these precious, precious lives. Mm -hmm. Our kids are the future. Yeah. This young generation is the future of America. Yeah. And I always tell my daughter who's 21, and you know, the times are tough, and she says, Mom, if I work really hard, um, I don't even think I could ever save enough to afford a house because home prices are now, the average price of a home is 400000 She goes, how would I ever save up enough? Even if I worked every waking hour and I said, things are going to get turned around. We are going to come through this difficult yeah. time. And your generation, this young generation, where the American dream has been out of touch for them, out of, they can't reach it, is going to come back. And you will have the most to benefit from this when we bring America back. And that. so I'm excited. I, I just want, I don't know if your, your, your viewers don't need me to pump them up because you get them excited and and ready to take on challenges. No, this is real life. This yes. isn't about motivation. This We're about going to get through this. And when things are tough, I just want you to remember that God put us here at this moment. Mm -hmm. It was not an accident that all of us are here for this pivotal moment in not just hu American history, but human history. Mm -hmm. This is a, is a key moment in human history. And the fact that we are here for it, ooh, I get goosebumps thinking about it. You know, just like our founding fathers 250 years mm -hmm. ago, a bunch of young men who were going up against the most um, badass globalist in the world, King George and the monarchy, and these young men, farmers, merchants, uh, people who were just working hard, mm -hmm. uh, decided, no, we don't want that. We want our freedom. And they fought back against the biggest globalist 
movement ever in the monarchy and yeah. won. God placed them there at right. that moment. And, and he placed us here. People to do it. Every day, average people. The heroes are among us. Mm -hmm. right. We are tomorrow's heroes. We need to come together. Yep. And I think we are. Yep. So yeah. I'm I, excited. I think living for something bigger than you is something most people never get to experience. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what you're doing right now. Well, I know that's I'm what you're doing. I'm 110. I'm a thousand percent in. <laughs> Somebody said, "What do you do for fun?" I go, "This." I mean, I'm just. I'm 100 percent focused you're, on. You're in total saving. immersion. Total immersion. Is that what they call it? Yeah, obsessed. Total immersion. They told me when I got here, you know, in a good way. you got to work out every day. I said, I have no time to work out. My workout is just getting up every Your brain's day. brain's working out 25 7. And saying, how <laughs> can we make another step closer to taking our country back, saving America? That's that. my workout. Yeah. That's it. Well, well, you look yeah. like you work out. Yeah, well, you look like you work out. So whatever you're doing, keep, keep going. I do a one-minute workout. I told you that. A plank. Yes. One-minute plank every day. Well, let's that. work it. It's one <laughs> hell of a plank. One of these days, I'm going to take it up to two minutes. I love it. I love it. Um, well, number one, everybody that's watching this right now, make sure, Carrie Lake, you guys follow her. When it's time to vote, make sure you do it. CarrieLake.com. CarrieLake.com. Yep. And if let's Spell it. K A R I L A K E dot com. You can go there and sign up to volunteer, uh, learn more about where I stand on all the issues. I don't, I don't just put a line. You, I lay out where I stand on the issues. If you want to make a donation, I know we're living in Joe Biden's world, and that's not possible for everyone. If you, if you can, great. If not, um, get involved in our campaign. Pray for us. We are in a battle of good versus evil right now. Mm -hmm. You hear that a lot. That's it's the true. Truth. It's yeah. the truth. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. I love uh, I love the way she speaks. I love the way she talks. I love the way that she wears her heart on her sleeve. I love that she's a family person, and I love that she lives for something bigger than herself. And right. most people thank don't you. do that. Exactly. And when you do that, that's whenever you can change the world, and she's doing it. So we want to say thank you. Love You're it. amazing. Yes, thank you. And thank you. Um, we're, we're all <laughs> blessed to have her with us today. So make sure, carrielake.com, make sure you guys go support her. Make sure when it's time to vote, not only do you vote, but you get everybody you freaking know in this world that's to right. vote and share the message. Let's change the world. So I just want to say we really Thank appreciate you. So you. Much, Anything Andy. you want to finish out with before we're done? Um, you know, know you. Just, uh, just that we, we have the common sense solutions to get through all these problems. None of these problems are too big. None of these problems are unsolvable. We just have to have the right leaders in place to do it. And I know there's some great people running. I'm, I'm a huge fan of President Trump. He wanted me to run for Senate, and I'm jumping in there, and I'm going ha to have his back because I know he has our back. He's a stud. And we're tired of watching people stab him in the back. I'm going to have his back, and we're going to make sure that America First agenda gets passed and we start turning things around and creating the America uh, that we deserve to have and bringing back our rights. So it, all of this is solvable. We've got to get the right people in. We're going to see some quick changes happening. And our best days are truly ahead of us. I'm 100% right. certain of that. Yeah, me yes. too. Well, we fully support you. And Thank you. And every one of you that follow us, we just want to tell you guys, get behind this movement. Whenever it's time to vote, make sure you do it. Okay, we always say execute. Okay, so make sure yeah. you That's the are one of the people, part. like she said, that shows up. <laughs> Everybody talks it. Yep. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then when it comes time, you know, they don't they don't make time to get right. down there. That's right. right. Sure July 30th address. is primary day. The big day is November 5th. That is the day we save our country. November 5th is the day we save our country. Good. Yep. We'll be there. That's all our of daughter's you. birthday. Yay. Big we'll, we'll celebrate yeah. her birthday and save our country. That's right. <laughs> That's it. All right. Hey, much love, guys. We love you. We'll see you in the next podcast. Thank Have you. a blessed day, blessed day. And thank you, Carrie. Thanks, thank guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.